All right, we're going to be working on some elimination pro uh, practice. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, we are going to have four of each kind of problem. So the first four problems, uh, we will be doing um, elimination that we don't need to change the equation in any way, shape, or form. We're able to just add both equations together um, to eliminate a term. And then uh, five through eight, we're going to have to subtract because we have the same value number, um, but we also have the same sign. So we have to subtract to change the signs in, our, in one of our equations in order to, um, to create two equations that eliminate. So let's start with number one here. So when I'm looking at number one, the first thing I notice is that I have a positive 7x and a negative 7x, and that those will cancel out without changing anything. So if I don't need to change anything, I'm going to combine my equations vertically. So that means I'm going to combine these two terms, I'm going to combine these two terms, and I'm going to combine these two terms. So 7x minus 7x cancels out to make 0. I'm not going to write 0x. Um, they've canceled each other out. Negative 5x plus 4y gives me negative 1y. And negative 4 plus 6, a negative 4 and a positive 6 give me a, um, a positive 2. So I'm left with negative 1y equals 2. What I'm able to do from here is to solve for y. I'm going to divide negative 1 from both sides first to find that y is equal to negative 2. Now that I've found what my value for y, I'm going to plug it back into either equation. I can plug it back in for my top equation, my bottom equation. It doesn't really matter. Um, so I'm going to plug it in for my top equation. So I'm going to rewrite this over here. But instead of y, I am going to, um, to replace it. I'm going to replace this y with a negative 2. So we're using a little bit of substitution here. So I have 7x minus 5 times negative 2 equals negative 4. I'll multiply these up to make positive 10 and rewrite everything else. And now I have a two-step equation. So I'll subtract 10 from both sides to get 7x equals negative 14, and then divide 7 from both, from both sides to get x equal to negative 2. So in this one, it worked out that y is negative 2 and x is negative 2. Uh, it doesn't always work out where they're the same number, so you do have to solve both. Uh, don't just get the answer for one and then assume that's the answer for the other. So my x value was negative 2, my y value was negative 2. In number 2, again, we're looking. Uh, we have terms that will immediately cancel each other out or eliminate. So I'm putting 6x minus 6x together. Those cancel out. I have negative 2y plus 3y, and that makes a positive 1y, equals 0 minus 6 is negative 6. So 1y equals negative 6. Now you may be tempted to go through and divide 1 to both sides. Um, that's a lot of extra work. 1y just means the same thing as y. So I don't have to actually move that 1. It's already solved for. y equals negative 6. And then we're picking either equation up top, and we're doing some substitution. So I'm going to pick um, my top equation, and I'm going to replace my y with a negative 6. You do need to be careful to make sure you are replacing the correct variable. So instead of y, I'm, I can put a negative 6 equals 0. So now we're multiplying these up to get positive 12, equal, even though I wrote a 10. Uh, positive 12 equals 0, and then 6x. Two-step equation, I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides first to get 6x equals negative 12, and then I'm dividing 6 from both sides to find x is equal to negative 2. So if I write my answer as an ordered pair, uh, it is negative 2, comma, negative 6. My x value, comma, my y value, and those are always written in parentheses. Okay, for number three, again, we have terms that immediately cancel out. We don't need to change anything. 
So we are just going to combine these vertically. 6 minus 6, or negative 6, positive 6, cancel out to make 0. A negative 4 and a positive 5 make 1y equals a negative 10 and a positive 11. We, signs are different, so we subtract, keep the sign of the larger number. 1y equals 1. Remember, if I get 1y, that is the same thing as just y by itself. I took my car to work today. I don't have to say I took my one car to work today. They mean the same thing. Okay, now that we've found the value for y, we can plug it into either equation. I'm going to choose my bottom equation just because there's less uh, negatives there. So I have 6x plus 5, and then I'm replacing the y with a 1. I solve this out. I get 6x plus 5 times 1, which is 5. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides so that 6x is equal to 6. And then when I divide 6 from both sides, be careful you don't say that it's 0. 6 divided by 6 is 1. So in this one, my x value was 1, comma, my y value was also 1. All right, number 4 are values that are going to cancel out right here, at positive x and negative x. So I don't have to change either of these equations. I can just combine them how they are. Uh, those cancel out. Negative 8y and positive 6y will give me a negative 2y. And negative 18 and positive 12 will give me a negative 6 when I combine those. Now I'm dividing negative 2 from both sides to find y is equal to positive 3. I can take that value and plug it back into either of my equations, whichever one looks easiest to you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and plug it in and plug it into the bottom one just because. It doesn't really matter. So I have negative x plus 6, and then I'm replacing my y with a 3 equals 12. So I'm going to multiply 6 times 3 to get 18. Bring down my other uh, work here, so a negative x. Now I have a two-step equation. My first step is to get rid of the 18 by subtracting. I'm left with negative x equals negative 6. My second step is to get x by itself by dividing out a negative 1. That's going to get rid of a negative uh, negative to give us positive equals uh, positive 6. So in this one, our x value is 6, our y value is 3. OK, moving on to the second set of these. Uh, we will have the same number, but we have also the same signs. So these won't eliminate how they are. What I need to do is I need to, instead of in my other equations, I was just kind of adding my whole equation together. So I was taking this one and just adding it to this one. Uh, leaving the signs how they are. And these ones we're going to subtract. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. Uh, we are going to say 7x minus 3y minus 20, and we're going to just subtract. Or the other way to think about it is to create an opposite. To create these to be opposites, I need to change the sign. And the way we change a sign is by multiplying in a negative. So I'm going to give a negative to that 2x to get negative 2x. I'm going to give a negative to this 3 to get positive 3y. And I'm multiplying this negative in to the negative 10 to get positive 10. I'll rewrite my top equation. That one doesn't need to change. If I change it, then I'm going to be in the same predicament I already was with terms that won't cancel out. So I have to leave that top one alone. Now we have an equation just like the first four we worked on. So we had to manipulate it by multiplying in a negative so that we could have two terms that eliminate. In this case, our y's are going to eliminate. So uh, if I were to add these or combine them vertically, 7x minus 2x, 5x. 3y and negative 3y cancel out. Negative 20 and positive 10 will give us negative 10. So 5x equals negative 10. I know that it's a little spread out, but I'm going to divide 5 to both sides. And x equals negative 2. Now that I've found what x equals, I can plug it into 
any equation, my originals, or even the one that I changed. Doesn't matter, but you have to use the same values from all the equations, so don't mix and match. I'm going to use my top one, so I'm going to have 7 times negative 2. This time I'm replacing the x. So we do have to be aware which term we're replacing. So minus 3y equals negative 20. I'm going to just draw a little line so that we can keep track of our work here. 7 times negative 2 is negative 14 minus 3y equals negative 20. I will be adding 14 to both sides to get negative uh, 3y by itself. And then I'm dividing negative 3 to find y is equal to positive 2. So in this one, my x value is negative 2, my y value is positive 2, and we write them as an ordered pair. Okay, again, I have the same values here, but if I were to combine these vertically, that would make a negative 4. That would not cancel out to make 0. So I'm going to multiply my bottom equation by a negative. Anytime we multiply by a negative, it means the opposite sign of. So the opposite sign of negative 2x is positive 2x. The opposite sign of positive 6y, negative 6y. And the opposite of negative 24 is positive 24. So essentially, I'm just changing all of my signs. Mathematically, I'm allowed to do that. It doesn't uh, change the actual value of the equation. My top equation is going to stay the same. 2y equals negative 8. Now I can combine these vertically. These will cancel out. These will make negative 4y. And these will make uh, 24 minus 8, 16 can divide negative 4 to both sides to find y equal to negative 4. Now that I've found what y is, I can plug it in. I'm going to plug it into um, this top equation here. So I'm going to say negative 2x plus 2, and then instead of y, I'm replacing it with a negative 4. These multiply to make negative 8. I now have a two-step equation. I'm going to add 8 to both sides first. Negative 2x equals 0. When I divide a negative 2 from both sides, 0 divided by negative 2 is 0. So my solution here is 0, comma, negative 4. Absolutely OK to get a 0 in our answer. All right, and I'll run through these last two. So again, I have the same value but if they have the same sign, they're going to add up to make 10 and not cancel each other out. So I have to multiply a negative, or you could say a negative 1, is essentially what I'm multiplying in to all three of these. Do it that way. And really all that's doing is changing the sign of every term. So if I had a positive, it's now a negative. If I had a negative, it's now a positive. I'm just changing the sign of every term. My top equation stays the same. 5x minus 8y equals negative 4. That allows me to combine these vertically. Those cancel. This will make negative 1y, and this will make 2. Then I'm dividing negative 1 to both sides, and y equals negative 2. I can take that, plug it into any of the equations. Doesn't matter which one. Uh, I'm going to choose the bottom equation. So I have 5x minus 7 times negative 2 equals negative 6. So I'm going to multiply these up first to get positive 14. Rewrite all of my work. I'm going to subtract 14 from both sides so that 5x equals negative 20. And then I'm dividing 5 from both sides to find x is equal to negative 4. So my answer for this one, in, written as an ordered pair, is negative 4 comma negative 2. So mathematically, <coughs> the work is a little bit easier than substitution. There's a little bit less work than substitution. But conceptually, it's a little bit harder because we have to be looking for, will these cancel out? Uh, these ones won't, so I have to multiply a negative in. 
Negative means the opposite sine of. So essentially, I'm just changing all the signs to get positive 8x, negative 4y, negative 8. My top equation stays the same. And then we combine vertically. So that cancels out. This makes negative 3y equals 12. I can divide negative 3 to both sides to find y equal to negative 4. And then I can plug that back into any of my original equations. Uh, I'm going to use the top equation. Why not? So I have negative 8x plus, and then instead of y, I'm putting a negative 4 there equals 20. So this plus negative thing kind of going on, uh, I'm just going to clean it up. Negative 8x minus 4 equals 20. I can add 4 to both sides. I get negative 8x equals 24. Divide negative 8 to both sides. And x is equal to negative 3. As an ordered pair, we would write it as x, comma, y.